We're officially done and dusted with the first week of the NBA season, and so far, there have been some pretty big surprises, but the Bucks, being in the undefeated circle, isn't one of them. We're waiting for the Magic, Kings, Lakers, or Thunder to log a win. A few early trends set the tone for the rest of the season, and today, we're going to share those that might stick this time. First, are the Pelicans getting a home court in the Western Conference playoffs? The New Orleans team has put out an outstanding start to the season. They won by wide margins against the Nets and Hornets, but were defeated in overtime by the Jazz, a game that led to Brandon Ingram and Zion Williamson leaving due to minor injuries after the tight loss. When it comes to the most underrated players in the league, Ingram's at the top of the list. Over the past two seasons, his mid-range jumper has become like second nature to him, pulling through on 46% of his attempts. He's also precise with getting to his spots, and among the league's top scorers. Similarly, Williamson still looks as terrific as he did before his injuries. Adding an all-NBA player to a squad that was 13-10 after the All-Star break has transformed the Pelicans into an undeniably impressive team. In addition, Trey Murphy's progress has crept up unexpectedly, with a 60% on his three-point looks after hitting 38% of them as a rookie. Murphy's playing time fluctuated last season, but he's forced coach Willie Green to give him regular minutes due to his value in the game. The Pelicans boast one of the league's most qualified members, who have covered every end of the court from the top to the front and the glass. All these positives might lead them to a home court advantage team in the Western Conference by the end of the season. Next up, should Russell Westbrook never come off the bench? The Lakers began their season with a blowout loss to the Warriors, and then moved on to an unreasonable loss lost to the Clippers club before completely blowing a seven-point lead late in the game with the Blazers. The main culprit behind these losses is their lack of shooting. While it's unlikely that they'll stay at 20.2% from deep for the entire season, they did lose most of their good shooters this summer and have yet to replace them. Most importantly, Russell Westbrook doesn't deserve the type of hate he's getting from fans, but the unfortunate reality is that he doesn't belong on this Lakers team. He's hit only 29% of his shots this season, including only one of the first 12 three-point attempts. But that isn't to say that Westbrook is the only one to blame on the team, since no one else has brought out results. Only two players on the team, Max Christie and Matt Ryan, are shooting more than 30% from beyond the arc after three games, and they've attempted a total of six shots. However, the point guard still has has a lot of potentials, his defense has been strong, and he can still reach downhill and break down a defense. However, his advantage is largely ineffective on this team of stars and non-shooters. All these signs point towards the best-case scenario being Westbrook's return home until the team can find a trade partner. Following up, the Jazz is too good to tank. With 23.5 wins, the Jazz was tied for the third lowest winning total by Caesars sportsbook entering the season. They gave up players the likes of Donovan Mitchell and Rudy Gobert, along with Royce O'Neal and Bojan Bogdanovic, in exchange for a chance to tank in a draft. Then they went on to open with 3-0 this season, before losing one in Houston on the second night of a back-to-back. -back. It's not like the Jazz were winning from nobody. They defeated the Nuggets on opening night, won an overtime thriller in Minnesota against the talented Wolves, then traveled to New Orleans to beat the Pelicans in overtime again before losing to the Rockets. If the Utah team is ready to tank, they've got to start moving some of their players immediately. Mike Conley remains a reliable veteran point guard, while Jordan Clarkson has been on fire this season, averaging 18.5 points per game. According to one metric, Jared Vanderbilt has been the league's best defensive player thus far. The real star, though, has been Laurie Markkinen but they're unlikely to move Markkinen. At the ripe age of 25, he qualifies as the future of their team. Walker Kessler has also excelled as a rim protector, despite being a rookie. However, they'll need to move some veterans to catch a Victor Wembanyama or Scoot Henderson this summer. Moving on, Benedict Matherin might be the favorite for rookie of the year. There have been several promising beginnings for this season's rookies. Amongst them, Shaden Sharp, despite
displayed the explosive athleticism that landed him as a first-round choice for the Trailblazers, while Jaden Ivey's been able to easily reach the rim for the Pistons. However, Paolo Bancaro and Benedict Matherin take the spot for clear favorites regarding Rookie of the Year. Bancaro demonstrated the size and scoring ability perfect for the NBA. His average is 22.8 points per game after the Magic's opening four games. But so far, Matherin, the Pacers' sixth-round choice, has stolen the show. The 20-year-old shooting guard has been fearless off the bench for the Pacers this season, averaging 22.3 points per game. He's made daring choices while carrying out pull-up three-point tries. He scored six of his first 13 attempts, and they weren't all easy shots. But the most impressive aspect of Matherin's offensive game is his persistence in getting right to the basket against NBA's Giants. He's been a blur on the court, slamming into the bodies of players much bigger than him. While most rookies enter the league on tiptoe and try to establish a strong foothold gradually, Matherin has forced his will on the games. His determination leaves no room for fear of failure, and that's evident in his attitude on the court. What's more, the Boston Celtics are going to be on top this season. Despite all the concerns surrounding the Celtics before the start of the season, which included a new head coach and the losses of Robert Williams and Danilo Gallinari, the defending Eastern Conference champions have been in it to win it since the very first two games of the season. This assumption doesn't just rest on their win from two other Eastern Conference playoff opponents in the two opening games. It's also formed from how easily they won on both these occasions. And keep in mind that this is without Defensive Player of the Year candidate Robert Williams patrolling the center. The brilliant performances against all odds led us to believe that the Celtics will be extremely good this season, or at least they have the potential to be. It's only a matter of time till all the members are fully healthy and the team is in full swing. And when that happens, their performances will be overwhelming. They were a few wins away from the championship last season. Anyway, now for the Nets' fatal flaw this season. In theory, the Brooklyn Nets are undoubtedly one of the league's finest teams. It's difficult to argue with their big three, Kyrie Irving, Ben Simmons, and Kevin Durant. However, we're seeing the remnants of their failures from last season in the first few games they've played. Inconsistency. That was the primary reason the Nets were unable to compete in the Eastern Conference last season, and it appears that this year won't be any different. Simmons has struggled, and the Nets' supporting cast has left plenty to be desired. Their attack is still disorganized in most games, while the defense has been somewhat adequate. Their performance so far isn't what contenders put forward, and if they want that to change, they will have to be more consistent. Finally, the Heat may have lost their fire this time around. All that was said about the Miami Heat during the offseason seems to be coming true after their performance in the first week. While losing one player shouldn't have had such a drastic impact, it has significantly diminished their flame. The season's first two games confirmed that the forecasters were correct after all. The Heat appears to be taking a huge step back this season, as their defense is struggling, and they're also failing on the offensive end too, just like they did in last year's postseason. For the time being, trade seems like the only possible solution to this unfortunate situation. Whatever happens, the Miami Heat isn't going to be burning the court in the Eastern Conference this season. And that's all for this video, guys. Which of these overreactions do you agree with? Let us know in the comments below. Don't forget to give this video a thumbs up and subscribe to our channel for more videos like this. See you at the next one.